Hello. It's good to see you. I didn't plan on coming back and making another video today, but there, theoretically there was an incident today. Um, it's been a long time coming. This has been building up since this past spring. It's been building up for more than six months, hypothetically. This may or may not have happened. Theoretical, hypothetical, alleged neighborhood gossip here. Okay, I don't talk a lot about the neighbors I have that my backyard kind of butts up to their backyard. I don't really talk about them much. Um, I know, I, I really don't. I talk about these neighbors, but I have neighbors back there as well because where I live, it's like a grid of streets. You know, you have streets and then so their house faces the street that they live on and my house faces my street and so our backyards come together like that. Um, they've been living there for about two years, I would say. And um, it was an older couple that lived there before. I never never really talked to them. They kind of kept to themselves and they had this giant poodle that was just the coolest dog. I love to watch them play fetch with their dog in the backyard, but I, we never really talked all that much. Um, anyway. But they sold their house to this couple. We will call them, it's not their real names, we'll say John and Jane Smith bought this house and they have, I think they have three boys. These, I think I mentioned them once before in a video. Um, there was one day that John was back there playing in the backyard with a couple of the kids and um, I don't remember what it was. They, they, the boys did something I think they're really bad about. They take like Capri Suns back there and they'll drink them and they throw the empty Capri Suns over into my yard. That might have been what I asked him about and he said they didn't do that. If you ever ask John or Jane any, anything about, you know, your kids were in the backyard and they're throwing trash into my yard, they didn't do that. My kids would never do that. That's, I don't know where that came from. That's not our trash. Maybe it was your kids and they, they just won't accept responsibility for anything. Um, I, hypothetically, I don't really talk to them very much, but there's been an issue. And, and I just want to say, I've discovered something kind of neat that I, I don't, I haven't really thought about a lot. I've changed a lot in the last 10 years, and this is a good example of one big thing about me that's changed. And I want to encourage other people to find their voice and make this change too. Now, if you if you grew up in the South as a woman, you may have kind of, it might, like me, you might have internalized this thing like, don't make a scene. You know, if you have a problem with somebody, just let it go. You don't need to confront them. Don't make a fuss. Um, I still look like this because I was out mowing. Sorry, I forgot to. I just glanced and saw what I looked like. <laughs> I was out mowing. It was real windy, and I didn't want the wind in my hair, so I put this thing on. Um, so if you were raised in the South, you might have learned to not make a big fuss about anything. And I know I was raised that way. But I... I realized I had a situation come up with Jane in particular. And 10 years ago, I would have handled this very differently. I, I would not have confronted her at all. I would have been very upset. It would have bothered me, but I wouldn't have done anything about it. But I've changed. I have found my voice. I have learned to speak up when something bothers me. I have, I have a right to speak up and say, hey, can we talk about this? This is an issue that it concerns me or it bothers me. Can we can we talk about it? I wouldn't have even done that ten years ago. No, I, I would have. I would not have done that. That would have been unthinkable. Because I grew up watching my mother be that way. My mother was kind of not meek, but just very, you know, don't make a fuss. It's okay. Just deal with it. Just tolerate it. You know, it's all right. And I just kind of picked that up from her. But, okay, so here's the deal with Jane. It's mainly Jane. John, really the only time you ever see him in the backyard, if he's back there, sometimes he'll go back there with the kids and they'll throw a ball around or whatever. And his, his kids go back there with their little Nerf guns, you know, those little Nerf darts, the little foam. They'll end up, I'll have like 30 of them in my backyard. 
and then either one of the kids or John or Jane will come ring my doorbell and ask me to go collect the darts for the kids. Um, and the first couple times I did, but then I finally stood up to them and I said, if you, if your kids cannot play without shooting them, the little darts into my yard, maybe they need to go play somewhere else. Or if you want, you can go back there and pick them up and I will let you go in the backyard and pick them up. I'm not picking them up anymore. And the first time I said that hypothetically, it was to Jane and she got huffy with me. And she said, I'm just asking you to pick up a few darts. It's not a big deal. And she had on, I just got these shoes. I don't want to walk around in your yard. I might mess my shoes up. I said, well, I'm not picking them up. You can either pick them up or my lawnmower will pick them up the next time I mow. And they'll just get mulched and put in a bag. So she huffed and she fine, um, she'll go back there and get them. I'll go get them, I guess. So she would go back there and buy and, and get the get the darts. Well, anyway, back in the springtime, Jane acquired a bunch of plastic totes, you know, like storage totes with the lids on them. She got about 30 of these big totes. And I noticed that she had them scattered about the backyard. And I thought, what is she doing? What is she, what is she going to do with all those totes? Well, then she got a bunch of dirt, like big bags of topsoil, you know, and she's filling these things with dirt. Well, she proceeded to build a massive, I guess you'd call it a container garden. And she was planting all these things. She had tomatoes out there. She had these vines, like these big vines. I don't know what they were. And the vines have now grown, they've gone over the fence in multiple places. It's, it's like something at a little shop of horrors. These vines have gone over into their yard, like Joe and them. They're tolerating it. I don't even know if they've noticed, but these vines are taking over one of their trees back there. Um, and the vines started coming into my yard and coming in to just like four or five different places through the fences. And she took all along the fence between my backyard and theirs, she has an entire wall of totes. Now she only did this up against my fence. There's also a fence here for Joe and Itchy and Scratchy 2.0. And then she has another fence for her next door neighbor. She didn't put totes along their fences hypothetically. Which I thought was kind of weird. Like, why is she only doing it up against my fence? The rest of them are just kind of scattered about the yard, um, just in different spots. But she completely lined my fence, just one tote right after another. It's like a wall of totes right up against my fence. Sorry, I just realized that the, the camera was doing a weird thing. Um, so, yeah, so she had all these totes. Now, this was back in early spring, hypothetically allegedly, whatever you want to say, maybe, maybe not. Then she proceeded to, now the vines have been growing all over since springtime. I've, I've been dealing with the vines and I've also been dealing with the plants. She had, first she had tomato plants and then she has some other stuff and it, I don't know if it's peppers. It's a weird thing. It might be a pepper plant. I don't know, but whatever it is, they're, that's all she has along this wall now. And these plants are enormous. They come up and the branches of these plants go out about four feet from the from the, where it's in the tote, right? And she's got them right up against the fence. I mean, like right up against the fence. So I have a cascading wall of plants coming over into my yard. They're coming through the fence. They're coming over the fence. It's just, you know, and they're all in my yard. I have to mow like this to get under it. And I've talked to Jane several times very nicely. And I wouldn't have even done this 10 years ago. And I would say, Jane, your plants are coming over into my yard and it's dropping. I think it's like some kind of little peppers or something. I said, these peppers are getting all over the ground. And she said, oh, I know, I come over and pick them up. Well, she leaves the ones that are rotted, and she leaves the rotten ones there. And she comes over, apparently, into my yard to pick them up, the good ones. The bad ones, she just leaves in my yard. And I said, but I can't mow. Your plants are coming over into my yard, you know, 
this far. Some of them come over more than that. And your vines are growing over into my yard. Um, can you please do something about that? She goes, oh, it's fine. It's not a problem. I said, it is a problem. And she didn't think it was. So I just want to make it clear, hypothetically, I have tried to discuss this issue with Jane. And all summer, I, you know, when I go out to mow or weed eat, and I've instructed my older son to do the same because he hates these bushes, these plants, as much as I do. I said, don't mess with them. Just take them and just kind of tuck them back over the fence. And I would just take the branches and just kind of tuck them so that they're behind the fence on her side. And, but they always flop back over. And the vines, same thing. I would take the vines, pull them up, flop them over the, over the fence. But they would always somehow end up back in my yard. And I, 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 every time I go to mow, I would pull them up, put them back over, you know. And as the summer has gone on, and even now, they're still big and bushy. It gets harder every time I do it because there, there's just more and more of this stuff. And I have tried to talk to her more than once. I was not mean. I was not ugly about it. I, I wasn't, I wasn't hateful at all. I think I was very respectful, but I was firm. I, I was, I made it very clear how I felt. And she just kept saying, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, you just, you know, is it really that big of a problem? I mean, they're not coming over in your yard that far. I don't I mean, that's just the way plants grow. I can't help that they do that. Just these people accept responsibility for nothing. They just, they are not responsible for anything that happens. Okay, and, and I, I didn't like it, but I thought, well, soon enough, there's going to be a frost and it's probably going to kill all of that. I don't think these are plants that would survive a, a hard frost. You know, they're, they're going to die. Just hang in there. I was, I was fine with just, I thought just, tolerate it a little longer. The frost is going to kill it and then it'll all go away. This won't be a problem anymore. And they are the reason I'm having trees planted. Um, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me tell you about my, my moment. I was up early this morning and I was washing dishes and I was looking out. So I'm standing at the sink washing dishes. It was about 7.30 and I happened to look out and I see Jane is also up bright and early this morning. She's out there picking the little peppers or whatever it was off these little trees. And as she picks, she takes the branches and just flops them back over in my yard. She's just deliberately where I had, you know, tucked them. She's picking them up, flopping them back over in my yard. And she just works her way down the fence, flopping these big old branches back over into my yard. And it was just a moment. I just had a moment. I didn't scream and holler. I just said, okay. Okay, all right. Because see, I have, um, my yard is gonna be aerated and overseeded on Thursday. So before you have that done, of course, you have to prepare your lawn. You have to mow it down as low as possible and you wanna keep it watered. You wanna have the grass cut as low as possible. And I was going to have, I had already decided I was going to do the backyard today and I'm going to do the front tomorrow. Because when you mow it down low as possible, you end up with bunches and bunches of bags of clippings, or I do. Because it's a lot lower than I normally mow it. So I thought, okay. All right. I know what I'm going to do now. So this afternoon when I went out to mow, I got my clippers, my little, my little, you know, hedge not hedge trimmers, little snips, you know, for cutting little branches and whatnot. And I got my little plastic bag to put my clippings in in the bag holder thing, and I went on over to the fence. <laughs> so I go out there, and I, it was, I didn't care if she could see me or not. Well, apparently she did. I went out there, and I, I didn't cut anything that wasn't on my side of the fence. I didn't. Everything that was flopped over, right up to the fence. I just went cut, snip, snip. I just gave it a haircut right along my fence there. Jane came running out the back. She has, they have a deck back there. She comes running out on the deck and she goes, what are you doing? And I didn't say anything at first. I just cut, cut, I'm just cutting. 
and putting them in my bag. And she comes running over there and she said, stop cutting my bushes. I said, what? Oh, these, these are mine. They're on my property. I'm just giving them a trim. So she starts grabbing them and pulling them back over to her side of the fence. And she's screaming and hollering, having a fit. John was home, I believe. He never came out. I don't think he wanted to get in the middle of it. One of her kids did come out there. They will call him Adam. I don't even know their names. They don't really talk to us. Adam comes out there and he goes, you need to give my mom's bushes back. I said, what are you talking about? I don't understand. You need to give her bushes back. I said, her bushes are right there. I don't understand. And so I took what I had cut and she even got her vines and everything and she pulled them back over at the fence and she's fussing and fussing and fussing and threatening to call the police and I, I just put my little headphones in I was listening to music and I just proceeded to mow my yard and she stayed out there there the entire time fussing at me and uh, so I'm mowing and I she underestimates my ability to ignore people for very long periods of time it's a skill that I'm, I'm, I'm a master at ignoring people. I almost forgot to tell you the funniest part. Now, this was not intended to be funny, but it's, it struck me as funny. Maybe I shouldn't find it funny, but I, I'm just being honest. I did find this to be very hypothetically funny. Just it, maybe you had to be there, but okay. So after I trimmed the, the, you know, and I got quite a bit before she came over there. I had this, it was like a, maybe a 35 gallon clear plastic bag. And when you have uh, trimmings or clippings or anything, the, you know, this, the city requires that you put them in a clear plastic bag. So it was about half full of these, these branches that had fallen over into, that were in my yard. And so I had them in the bag and it wasn't full. So I, I kept, I kept mowing. I could, I, of course, I had I had my, my earbuds in and I'm listening to music, but the whole time I could hear Jane, and she's becoming more and more dramatic over there. Oh, please, no, please give that back. Now, they're just branches. I, there's hardly anything on them, but she's over there having a complete meltdown over the situation. Oh, no. And she, I could hear her. And then, so my, my um, the bag on my mower got full, and so I removed it. And as I'm approaching the bag, and it's on the little, the little frame thing that holds it open, she goes, oh, please, God, no, don't do it. I can hear her over the music. And as I dumped it in, she does this perfect, like it was like in a movie, this, no, like I had just dumped lava on a bunch of puppies or something. It was the most, it was the perfect cinematic scream. No! It was grass clippings, okay? I got a little chuckle out of that, definitely. <laughs> and so I'm mowing. Now, I have cameras all around my house that have, you know, if there's anybody anywhere on my property, I have cameras inside the house and outside. Um... If anyone steps foot on my property, I get a notification. And I got a notification that someone was in my side yard in the driveway. And I, I was kind of back here, so I went up and looked. Jane, hypothetically, allegedly, was sneaking into my driveway because I had taken the bag, the bag that I had the branches in and some grass clippings, and I had put it up near my trash bins. I caught her sneaking up into my driveway to take the bag. She was headed for it like this, and she saw me, and she stood up. She was literally down sneaking, and I said, may I help you? She said, I'm going to need those back, please. I said, oh, no, no, I don't think so. And she said, well, you got to give them back. They belong to me. I said, they were on my property. They belong to me, and I don't like them, and when I encounter weeds in my yard, I cut them down and dispose of them. And she again said she was going to call the police hypothetically. 
And I said, I think you should. Maybe they, they could help deal with the situation and also with the fact that you are trespassing on my property and attempting to steal my belongings. So she left. She didn't come back out in the backyard anymore. I didn't see her anymore. Um, I didn't intend for things to go that way, hypothetically. Um, but at some point, you have to stand up for yourself and speak up for yourself and not allow people to run all over you. But again, like I say, 10 years ago, I would have just let her continue to do that. Um, I, I imagine things, I don't know how things are going to go after tonight. I've never done anything like that. I've never had an encounter with her like that before. The closest I've done was imply that I would mow over her kids' little Nerf darts if she didn't go pick them up. I didn't get any more Nerf darts in my yard after that. I'm sure it was just a coincidence. Um, I don't know how things are going to be with us now. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Things have always been tense. We've never had a cordial relationship. I tried. In my, for my part, I feel that I tried to have a cordial relationship with them. It didn't really work out. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't, personally, I don't think I'm in the wrong. I did try to talk to her. I did try to correct the situation. She was aware that it bothered me and that it was a concern. And then I did not like her plants growing over into my yard and her vines growing through my yard climbing up on my stuff, you know, I didn't care for that. And she was not worried about it bothering me. So I guess for my part, I wasn't really worried about it bothering her. If I cut off the portions of her plants that were growing three and four feet over into my yard and growing through the fence and trying to root in my yard. And, uh, that's why I say I don't think they're pepper plants. I'm not really sure what they were, but they were some of the branches were trying to root into my yard. And the tomatoes would hang over. And it really bothered me that I always had these rotten pieces of stuff. There would be rotten tomatoes on the ground, rotten pepper-looking things that I would have to deal with that she would just leave there. And I didn't like the fact that she openly admitted she was just hopping the fence and going over into my yard to collect her her produce. So I don't, I no no police have shown up, so I don't think she called anybody. Um, I do have video of her in my yard heading towards my stuff, and, you know, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I don't think anybody's going to show up, but oh yeah, the trees. That was the reason I wanted the trees. So what they did was when they first bought the house, the people who lived there before had these two beautiful, no, no, not two, there were three or four enormous cedar trees in their backyard. The big, old, you know, big cedar trees. It takes forever for them to get that big. What they did was they moved in. They got all the branches cut off the cedar trees. I mean, all the way up. So it just looked like sad little toothpicks sticking up out of the ground. And then she proceeded to grow vines and have them run up the cedar trees. And of course the trees died. They can't live like that. The trees died. So now back in their backyard are four dead trees that are eventually going to fall. And they have vines growing all over them. They did that last year and all the vines died. So you have these nasty, ugly, dead vines hanging. There are new vines that have grown up there this year that are going to die and then they'll be hanging up there and then they'll grow more. And we have plants growing through the fence. We have vines growing through the fence. It's it's an eyesore. Their yard is an absolute eyesore. It's 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 awful. They also store old appliances on their deck. For whatever reason, they don't work. They're not plugged in or anything. They're just back there. So I, the tallest fence I'm allowed to get in this neighborhood is six feet. So I was talking to the lady that does, does my hair, and she said, well, you know what you need. I said, what? She needs, She said, you need a whole row of F.U. trees. She didn't say F.U. I said, what are you talking about? She said, look out there. Her neighbor, hypothetically, 
had a hot tub put out on their deck. This is the lady who does my hair, not me, hypothetically. She said when they had that hot tub put in, it was a couple. They liked to get naked and go out there and hang out on their deck naked and then get in the hot tub. She said, I don't want to look at that. So I had to plant a whole row of F.U. trees so I don't have to see that anymore. I mean, they're on their own property. I mean, I I guess I could do report them or something, but she said she just put a big row of, and there are different types of trees. You know, they're just like, you know, I, um, the ones I'm getting, I forget what they're called. I, I have found a guy that's really good with trees, and he said, I know exactly what you need. And he, he's going to come in and plant eight he said, eight will do it. These big, tall, they're not cedar trees. It's something else. It does, it's not important. Completely has nothing to do with the story. He said, we're going to have a big, um, there's a holly tree back there that I wanted cut down anyway. He said, we're going to come in, cut that holly tree down, grind the stump down, and we're going to give you a whole row of these trees. And they grow really fast. So give it a couple of years. You won't be able to see anything over there anymore. I said, that sounds wonderful. It's going to cost a freaking fortune, and I don't care. If I don't have to deal with them anymore, it will be worth it. And he said, they're going to grow so thick that whatever that is, because he saw, I said, look at this. He said, oh, yeah. Well, whatever whatever they're growing back there, they're, it's not going to be able to grow through these trees. And uh, if it continues to be a problem, just keep giving it cuts, you know, just keep cutting it off. <laughs> just... If it's growing into your trees, deal with it. Um, but yeah, I'm, they're coming next month to give me a whole row of F.U. trees in my backyard and give me my pink dogwood that I always wanted and get rid of that darn holly tree in my backyard that I hate. Every time I mow around it, it pokes me. It has a little pokey. I hate, hate holly trees. I hate holly bushes. I don't know why anybody would voluntarily plant one anywhere. But anyway, my holly trees, it's a tree. It's its about 30 feet tall. It's going away. I'm getting my pink dogwood, and they're going to trim. I have a crepe myrtle that needs to be trimmed back because it's up on the house again. I had it trimmed a couple years ago, but, it, you know, they grow out, and it's part of it's on the house again. So I'm going to get them to trim it back. And, it, yeah, it's expensive. If you've ever had stuff like that done, its it's expensive, but it's, it's worth it to me. To be able, I hate every time I go into my kitchen and when I'm, I work downstairs and that's my view, the Jane's handiwork out there, that's what I get to look at every day. And some mornings I get up and there's trash in my backyard, you know, just junk that their kids just pitch over the fence and no big deal. And I just, I'm expected to just clean it up and not say anything. I, I think I'm just going to start throwing it right back in their yard. And if they question me about it, I'll just say, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll just gaslight them like they do me. I don't know what you're talking about. What trash? I don't see anything. I, I, that doesn't sound like a problem I need to deal with. So, it's scary to speak up. I mean, I, I feel after... I, I feel, in a way, I feel kind of bad because it goes against everything that I grew up thinking I was supposed to do. And, you know, I was, that was not considered an appropriate way to act. You know, my mother would never have done anything like that. No, she would have complained about it, but she would have just grumbled and just put up with it. And she probably wouldn't approve of me doing what I did. She would say, now, Mary, that's not how you handle things. I tried talking to her, hypothetically. I tried talking to her. I tried to communicate. I tried to reason with this person. And she made it abundantly clear that she just didn't care that it was the problem. Because to her, it was no problem. It's no big deal. It's nothing. You're making a big deal out of nothing. So, it's going to be very obvious when I get my F.U. trees planted. It's going to be very obvious to her what I'm doing. And I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Um, the fence that we have back there now is a low fence. It's it's not it's not very tall. It's like waist high. It's not a big. It's like a little picket fence, you know. So the stuff grows through the fence. So 
I'm looking, that's, but that's going to be about a month from now when I get my FU trees planted and they're not going to be very big for a while, but at least I will know that at some point they're going to get big enough that I won't have to look at anything back there anymore and I cannot wait. And I'm kind of surprised Joe and Itchy and Scratchy haven't said anything to her. I don't, I don't think they ever have, but not as much stuff ends up in their yard. It's mostly mine because we have that big area and most of it seems to end up in my yard. Well, I like to see them throw those Capri Sun containers over a 40-foot tall tree. <laughs> That'd be a little hard for them. So they'll have to deal with their own trash from here on out or throw it into somebody else's yard, which they probably will. And their parents will continue to defend the little darlings. No, my, my son would never, my kids would never do that. Okay, have fun with them when they're teenagers. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be just so sweet and easy to manage. So I, I feel I feel a little bit bad, but not too bad. I have a feeling I won't see any more plants flopped over into my yard. But if I do, I, do, I know where my little clippers are, and I've gotten pretty good at trimming them back. So I'll just go hit them again. <laughs> so it's okay to speak up for yourself. It's okay to defend yourself. It's okay to not be okay with stuff doesn't mean you have to make a scene or hurt people, but it's okay to make your feelings known. It's okay to, to speak up. Even if you've been taught all your life it's not, it's okay. If, if you think it's okay for other people to do it, if you saw somebody else speaking up for themselves, just know that you, you deserve the same thing. You, you are worthy of a little defense every now and then. You don't have to just tolerate everything and be a doormat to everybody. I was raised to be a doormat and I am pushing 50 and I am just now getting to the point that I don't default to that in every situation. I've learned to speak up a little bit. So I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. So I got that going for me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to my FU trees. Definitely. Well, now I'm going to go take a shower and do something to my hair and get ready to go to bed. Thank you so much for watching my little extra video today. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you will find your voice and learn to speak up when you need to. Thank you so much for watching.